thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's, uh, it's my great pleasure and I, I am so, so much honored to be here in the beautiful city of Sofia. Well, actually, this is my first visit to Sofia. And I really, it, it's been only one day since I arrived with Sofia yesterday. And I had a chance to have a walk last night on Victor I really love the uh, Boulevard. Um, the, the stores, people there. That, that was uh, uh, somewhere like uh, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and I really enjoyed the food there. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much for again inviting me to this, uh, this uh, uh, very honorable uh, seminar. Well, you know, uh, Dr. Dimitrova, she actually focused on culture diplomacy. What I'm going to do today here is a little bit expand the horizon of public diplomacy because uh, my understanding of public diplomacy is, uh, is, is a little bit broader than culture diplomacy. What well, actually public diplomacy contains, to my own classification, the culture of diplomacy as one of many sub films. Okay? Um, so I just want to start with uh, three questions. Right. I just raised three questions, and I, I would like to try to address those questions in, in my translate, I mean, uh, presentation. The first question, why do we bother public diplomacy, including of course cultural diplomacy, particularly now, in the 21st century, since the dawn of the century? Why now we, we bother to struggle with the public diplomacy? Not only great powers, such great powers like uh, uh, the United States and China, Russia, the countries like uh, us, middle powers, or for that matter, even small powers, they're actually rushing to the field of the rising new field of public diplomacy. Why? Okay. The great powers, they literally, you believe me, pouring money in the field of public diplomacy. Not only money, but also manpower for the past 15 years or so. So, why? That's my first question. The second question that I would like to discuss today is why then public diplomacy is important to countries like Korea? You could probably replace Korea with Bulgaria. Why, why, why public diplomacy is important? Not great powers, but middle or small powers. That's my second question. The third one. Is there something like a Korean model of public diplomacy? Do we have some like a public diplomacy Korean style, like a, like a, a, a you know Sigma Smith size Gangnam style? Do we have some public diplomacy Korean style? I don't know. So that's my third question. Let me let me just start with the, uh, my first question. Why why public diplomacy in the twenty first twenty first century? I mean, the reason is very simple. My, my answer to the question is very simple. Because the world is changing. Okay, we witnessing the rise of totally new world order since the dawn of the century. Okay? Let, me, let me tell you this. There is what I call Westphalia, Westphalia world order, which has been existing since at least the 17th century, right after uh, the uh, agreement of Westphalia treaties in 1648. Okay? The Westphalia World Order. There are three characteristics. The first one, the predominant actor in the international society, in that order, is nation state. Okay? There's no such thing like a non state actors, they're not prevailing. The nation states are prevailing, predominant international actor. The second, in an international society, in order to achieve a country's foreign bonus goals, it's almost imperative to have, as a, as a means of achieving foreign policy goals, to have hard power. Among others, military might and economic capacity. Okay? That's the second feature. The third one, as a result of those two, two characteristics, nation state and prevailing hard power, the international society, although it's anarchical, there's no central authority, central government in international society, international arena, but nevertheless, the order is in 
formally hierarchy. Okay? It's a hierarchy only. At the top of the hierarchy, there are great powers, of course, great powers by definition, strong in terms of military and economic capacity. And mid-level, middle-power countries, and small, weak countries. Okay? This is a very hierarchical order. Mm -hmm. But in the 21st century, we see gradual change in all those key core elements of the existing world order. So I call the emerging new world order as post West Poly world order. Instead of nation state, okay, we are witnessing the rise of enormous non state actors. Not only companies, not only international uh, non governmental organizations, okay, but also you know, individuals. Why those new non state actors? Non state actors because I mean, the reason is very simple. The technological breakthrough, technological innovation, social media, the new media have been greatly empowering power of people. They can now voice up in the international system on particular issues, whether it's a climate change, it's a terrorism, uh, uh, food problem, whatever. They could, could make utilizing network in the internet cyber network, and also utilizing uh, new social media, they could, they could, they could make this, their voices heard in international society. Not only that, not simply voices, but they could act together, collective action. That's why technologies are empowering non-state actors. But, you know, there is a very, another, I mean, uh, dark side of the story. The rise of, say, for example, Islamic State. It's obviously no state actor, but in the neg negative sense of the term. So we have, uh, you know, two uh, contrasting faces of the, uh, in, the, in the rise of known state actors. That's the first one. Second, instead of hard power, we now see the, 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 the capacity of soul power. The soul power is simply one of those new notions of power. Soul power is what? And simply put, it's, it's attraction. The Bulgarian cultural attraction, that's your soul power, whatever the source is. But then we have also something like the relational power. When we establish relations, then we could create new power. This is a totally different notion of, from uh, the, the conventional notion of power. Why? The conventional notion of power, whether it's a it's a military power, economic power, it's power over somebody. But the relational power is totally different. This is a power with somebody else.